a link to the past. <laughs> Legend of Zelda. Welcome to Candid Travels, Texas. Now, today I'm wearing the Link to the Past t-shirt. Dude, I love the Link. All right, so this is a shout out to Skyman Slash, who during her childhood shared with me Link. And the, the game was Super Smash Brothers. And one of my favorite characters is actually Link. So I decided to wear this t-shirt. It's an old game from 20 years ago, which I haven't played recently, but still a lot of fun. All right, so welcome to Candid Troubles, Texas. Today, I don't know where we're going to go, as usual. We never know. <laughs> Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Anyway, um, today I wanted to share with you the uh, money root tactic. Okay? Money root tactic. And now... The moment you grasp the money root tactic, then you will not have any challenges regarding money ever again, if applied properly. Now, why is this related to tactics? Because it's important, it's an aspect of life that we all have to deal with as warriors, W-A-R-R-I-O-R, not warriors, W-O-R-R-I-E-R. -R -R. If you worry, you cannot be a warrior. A warrior, W-O-R-R-I-E-R, -R -R -E is not equal to a warrior, W-A-R-R-I-O-R. -R -R. So, therefore, money root tactic. Okay, guys? Yeah, all right. So, let me begin, and uh, in a few moments, you'll maybe see a little, little thing here. Concentrate on this next equation, okay? Okay, so here we go. The money root tactic of ATS ATTAC. All terrain, all ATX ITAC, all terrain crossing. Internal Tactical Arts Collective, which is the collective, it's not a system, it's a, it's a collection of principles, of which I am the founder, Grandmaster Reverend Dr. Liam Sullivan Stone, DDPHDND. The letters are basically identification, because there's other Liam Stones, you know, of that name, of that's my uh, experience and what I do for my job, for my uh, purpose in life, my career, okay? So anyway, um, money root tactic. If, if, if anyone can, can, can grasp this, finances and money will never be of any concern to you whatsoever, okay? So what I go to, the first and foremost thing I'm gonna share, we are in the West, and so Western worlds, uh, Obviously, there's many books of wisdom and tradition from a past. It goes to a link, a link, a link to the past. So we're going to go in the past. Obviously, books, videos, episodes of shows like what we're watching right now are all due to the, the, the past. Okay, the past. So basically, I will go to the past and I will go back to uh, the, what we went through recently. My dad, who's a Gideon, the Holy Bible, all right? So we're going to go to a section which is a very well-known uh, part of this. Now, people get all bent out of shape when then they're talking about the Bible, like it's some big deal. It is, but you got to understand who is writing it to whom. And so this thing is called First Epistle Timothy, okay? Now, all the numbers and chapters and verse numbers were added later. Originally, it was just written out, okay, because people study it and they annotate it and all that. So anyway, I used this uh, 
obsolescence theories of forgetting and problem of matter and in complement to the chain of flowers. This is interesting. Study that, you'll know your money real well. Okay, it involves geometry and physics, forgetting and remembering. This is pretty cool stuff. Anyway, I'm using this bookmark to show you this. Now, the epistle, this is called the first epistle. Epistle just is a fancy old English word for a letter or email. It's the first email of Paul the Paul to his disciple Timothy. So it's an older man telling a younger man some advice that will make his life better. It's basically a, this is basically like an email from Paul to young tiny Tim, if you will, Timothy. Uh, it's an email from Paul to Timothy uh, uh, giving him excerpts of his TED talk <laughs> that he's about to give. All right, so basically what you have here is if you want to find this part, just go to that, and it's you know labeled as chapter six, verse. Uh, so this is a real letter, uh, six, uh, huh? Verse, uh, yeah, yeah, chapter six. Anyway, just back about this stuff. Um, the 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 thing about this is, and I want to just make it clear, it is not a. Um, a big, it's a letter. It's like a, a long-ass email from Paul to Tim. And Tim is his young, it's a young lad uh, that Paul is, uh, that has asked Paul to train him. So it's like a excerpts from Paul's TED Talk. So if you go to, this is how the later on the church took, a, took it and, and put it in little like notations and stuff. So you can find chapter 6, verse or sentence 10 if you will. All right. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed up from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves with many sorrows. So basically, sorrows is like depression, anxiety, uh, nervousness, any of those kind of things. Now, this is very important because it it does it's not saying money is necessarily you hear it all the time money is not the root of all evil it is the tr trusting in of money is the root of all kinds of evil that means anything that's not good that's going to you're not going to it's 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 like not peaceful right where you're judging things and you're resisting things, and there's you know all this kind of conflict within yourself, right? So, anyway, so it it is money trusting in money. Now, this is the thing to remember, and this is something that is not taught. This this is not taught, okay, uh, in most sermons and churches and. This is financial truth. Okay. What is money? You gotta understand that. Okay? Where does money come from? Now, if you want to get honest, money is printed by the government. All right? So, if you think about it, money and government are the same thing. You got it? It's a way to standardize. In this day and age, all money is created by government. Government equals money. Now, this verse says, for the trusting of money, you can replace the word love with trust, and you can re literally replace the word of money with government is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and to pierce themselves through many sorrows. Without the governments of the world, there would be no money in your respective country, would there? No, no, there wouldn't. No, there wouldn't. So if you think about it clearly, what Paul is telling his disciple Tim 
in, in his email is money that don't trust in government. And it, it isn't a surprise he got beheaded by government later. Okay. The ultimate truth here is governments can be bad or good. And the, the good news, in my opinion, if, if there is such a thing as good or bad, the way it is, it is what it is, right? If a group of people who deem themselves leading the masses are ethical, they will continue, okay? There is a universal consequence to bad ethics. And so if there is ethics, okay, in the government, then it will continue. But if there is no ethics in the government, then that government always will collapse. Now, as individuals, we are divine beings, meaning we have divinity, the divine creator within us. As Christians, we understand that. And so we are to trust the creator. We are, we are to trust God, the universe, not a government. So if you understand that if you do not trust and you understand that money is printed by government of every country. And so when you understand what money is, it's kind of like if you are familiar with firearms of guns, you'll understand that what a gun is, what are the pros and the cons with a firearm. For example, a firearm is fantastic for far away, uh, com like when you're far away from the person, you can shoot them from far away. When you're in a closed quarters, you know, like within, um, you know, three feet or less, it may not be the best weapon. Maybe a knife would be better, right? Okay, so you understand the workings of a, of a gun, a firearm, different types of firearms. You've got, you know, a Glock, you've got an AR-15, all kinds of different kinds you've got. Uh, single action, you've got uh, uh, semi-automatic, automatic automatic weapons, you have bazookas, you have all kinds of things. Now, when you understand a weapon, you'll be able to handle it better. So, here's, it's no different with money. So, the key thing is to understand that money is printed by government. Now, you you know that there are now people that are printing, uh, they call it cryptocurrency, which is they're independent private people that are printing creating these uh, blockchain technology on the computer, uh, it's a digital currency. Now, I, I understand it's not centralized, I agree with that. However, there has to be someone who created it. So the person creating that coin and getting the people to use it, at the, at the beginning, they are the government of that coin. Okay, so now you understand money is not like what you think, you gotta go outside of yourself to grab it. OK, it and, and so you don't want to trust. It says here for the trust. So, OK, you, the, for the trust in money or anything exter external to you, uh, which could be anyone, it could be your government for a child. It might be your parents, your mom and dad ultimately will lead in frustration, sorrow, anxiety. So we are divine beings. We are to trust the divinity within us, okay, as well as the divinity all around us, which we, when we say namaste, like in Sanskrit, right, in, in, it means I, I honor the divine in you that is in me, right? We say aloha. It's the same thing in Hawaiian, right? So basically, that is a very good thing to keep in mind. The trust in government. So money is government, okay? And so that's basically it. Trust not in, in external sources of authority because the authority external to you may or may not be correct. Okay, so let's say how one, what works for one person may not work for another. That's why 
it, at ATX ITAC we have a um, we have a uh, understanding that not everybody's going to be the same, but we have a collective of everything that works for some people, and you have to decide what works for yourself, which is kind of similar to like Jeet Kune Do philosophy, what Bruce Lee taught, but G, uh, Bruce believed in taking away information, whereas what we have, what I created, is a conglomeration, like the Borg in Star Trek. Make it so, Captain Picard, you know, sort of like the Borg, right? You're collecting, 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 and then you'll have the ability to discern what works for one person or works for a certain situation. So, but the, the, the principles are simple, okay? It's um, just staying efficient and strong, okay? So, uh, yeah, government for the trust in money or government is the root of all kinds of evil that will lead to, here we go again, for the trust of money is a root of all kinds of evil, which some have strayed from the faith. The faith they're referring to is faith in the divine, in God, in Christ, within yourself, in their, and then because they strayed, in their greediness, their greediness, and, and uh, pierced, like a pierce is like a sword, thrusting into your heart themselves. They have killed themselves. In Japanese, it's called seppuku. It's a suicide, harikari, right? Pierced themselves through many sorrows. So I know like we see it all the time and, and that's how you become encumbered and then you get worried about what your bank statement says and then you worry. And here's the thing, on a good sense, practical uh, just way of thinking, um, you can't drink your money, okay? If it's in your account, you can't eat it. The money can't be there for you to, to heal you in, its, in that form. Um, the money, money doesn't have intelligence. It's just coins and paper printed by the government of wherever the heck you live, okay? So the trust in money is the root of all kinds of evil. Now, if you remove evil and you don't trust in government or money or anything external to you, and that includes your church leaders too. You gotta watch them like a hawk. Make sure they're not going against ethics. Includes me too, okay? So um, once you do that, you're gonna be cool and right on. And so uh, what I recommend is, it's called the most important video by Joe, he's a Christian professor, Joe Imbriano. His name is J-O-E-I-M-B-R-I-A-N-O, -E Joe Embriano. He has uh, Italian ancestry, okay? So um, you can look it up on YouTube if you'd like, or you can just go to this channel that you're watching right now, which is Love and the Stone Productions. You hit that playlist, and you hit liked videos, which is a playlist. And I just, this past week, it's on here. It's the most important video by Joe Embriano. The reason I, I recommend this video to watch when you have time, okay? All right, so that's what it looks like. Is It's quite long. It's a, it's a one hour and 28 minute uh, lecture one hour and 28 minute lecture. Oh, by the way, this last week's video, I had so many people comment, which was the the Bald Cafe, Bruce Lee Speed Tactic, and our visit to NASA with Allison and the family, uh, 2020, with a lot of fun. NASA is so fun now, it's like a theme park. <laughs> it is a theme park. Anyway, uh, thank you for all the cool comments from around the world. Um, uh, hello, uh, Witty Bonita in uh, the Philippines. Uh, we have so many people. I'm sorry if I don't mention you. And thank you, Harry James, for commenting, uh, saying how, um, what was it? My English accent is bloody marvelous. I hope you mean it. <laughs> anyway, we have a lot of English people here in Texas. Anyway, um, thank you so much, Tongbin Cooking. Uh, geez, I just kind of 
so thank you for the private messages i have so many private messages thank you email and then uh the the public ones the comments that are underneath that video thank you so much thank you um like i said this is not a massively promoted video we're not doing this uh to to generate any revenue uh, directly from this so thank you it's good to hear back that you people still like talking about bruce lee and chuck norris and such okay yeah so anyway i had to pause a minute because a pause because the battery uh kind of went out so once again listen <laughs> it doesn't matter if you have a trillion to a billion dollars worth of assets in some account because no matter where you store the money it's got to be housed by a certain government authority right so if you're miserable and you have sorrow it's not going to be worth anything so the reason i mention joe uh imbriano i m b r i a n o joe professor because he's he's a professor he's a christian professor so just to let you know where he's his part where he's coming from he talks a lot about governments and so it it will help you understand government. If you understand government, then you will understand money. It's like you have a working knowledge of something, then you will be able to not totally trust it, but to trust wisdom. Okay, so all right, so Joe Imbriano, check him out. Um, then second, I would uh, want to tell you, uh, if you are a fellow physician, scientist, uh, minister, um, physicist, and you like a more you know scientific uh, literature, I highly recommend playing with this orthomolecular psychiatry. So that will uh, help you understand how the human beings sometimes perceive their external world <laughs> differently, right? That's what mental health is, a mental illness that we categorize. I don't believe in, in labeling myself, but it's something you can pick up. And that's going to dictate how somebody uh, interacts with government or money or things like that. And if you are a non-technical person, I highly recommend this book. If you can find it in the original, uh, last but not least, I recommend a Busting Loose from the Money Game. I've mentioned this before by Robert Scheinfeld. I recommend this book and this book alone. I don't endorse any other books that he has written, but this book is not really about money. It's actually about, in a, in a very lay perspective, so you don't have to be a scientist, you just kind of like our show is user-friendly to everyone. Um, how, it's actually about how the universe works from the inside out rather than from the inside in. Now, if I've repeated a couple times, Today, we're having um, a couple of ordained, divinely ordained camera situations. So it's done on purpose, okay? So that is the money root tactic. If you have any questions or comments, comment below or send it to us as usual privately to D-R-L-I-U, A-L-O-H-A-L-I-U at gmail.com. And just remember, money isn't your fitness. Um, it's a tool. It's, 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 a, it's a tool, you know? It's a tool. But it isn't what you think. Money isn't what you think. All right? And once you understand that, then money will never, ever be an issue in your life. It's a non-issue. And you don't have any more worries anymore about anything. Okay? All right. So I have no idea where we're going to go. We'll see. A link to the past. A link. A link. A link. A link. And just like that, my days in the U.S. Army was over. So I went home. Now, being that I was this war hero, 
a ping pong champion. Uh, and so the city of Greenbow, Alabama, gave me a real fine job. I was cutting grass. And since I was a gozillionaire, since I was a gozillionaire, I cut that grass for free. Jenny, you should go home to Greenbow, Alabama. Money root tactic. There's no place like home. Why? So with that, with the money route tactic, we're going to have travel on foot candidly of home. That's Doris, who's our Ponyo. So if you know anime, you know Ponyo is about a fish. And look at her eyes. Her eyes are actually above water. She sticks her eyes, eyes above water like a crocodile, just like in the cartoon, like in the anime cartoon. Check that out. All right, here's the dinner bell. And this is my room. There's no place like home. All right. Cool. All right. Come on, come on. She got some. You gonna eat? There she goes. There she goes. She eats very well. Look at that. Look at those big eyes. She's going for it. She's going for it. She's going for it. All right. All right. All right. Hey, check out my uh, Namas trucker hat. Does it say Namast or Namaste? <laughs> Namaste, which is the uh, I honor the divine in you that is in me. In, uh, yeah, Namaste or Namast. You pick. All right, so uh, we're doing just a, we're, we're traveling on foot right now. Canada travels on foot. And it is actually, let me show you the temperature real quick. Show you the temperature real quick. It's still flu season, as you know. And um, flu season is from like December all the way, November actually, all the way until May, all around the world. But here in Central Texas, we have hot and cold. So the interior temperature, humidity is there. It's already 79 and 61, so I'm gonna probably to turn the air conditioning on. All right, so we'll do a little travel around home. We're gonna travel around home. So, as you know, last winter I planted wildflowers. Technically, Christians can celebrate Merry Texmas every day. Every day is new every morning. Every day is a celebration. Here's where I coached Culver Palms Family YMCA, a kid's basketball team that won the championship. Now, I am not a basketball player. I am a baseball player, a uh, track athlete, and a martial artist. So anyway, let's see how the progress of this has been going. All right, Texas wildflower seed. Now, I'm not sure if the blue bonnets are, are coming up or not, but here we are. Okay, let's go. Let's travel on foot. There's no place like home. Yeah. Kaboom. All right, before, uh, let's go. I was at the front door and something came in. Let me show you what's in Oh, look. That's what's in there. It's a gallon of nano silver so this is different from colloidal silver because the particulate is smaller and it's actually going to be 
ultra pure water silver. It's for disinfection. Uh, you can use it for, you drink it, uh, more affordable. And more importantly, like if Reese gets sick, uh, our, our lop rabbit, we can give, put a little bit of it in the water. And uh, yeah, do not use colloidal silver because colloidal silver, the particulate is too large. And like some people have turned blue because they took too much. This is nano silver. It's a nanotechnology size stuff. All right, another little tactical tip. All right, let's crush that thing. Crush it, why? Crush, oh yeah, look. Yeah, here in Texas, we're real big on recycling. Always have been. All right, let's go travel to the front yard wildflower. All right, here it is. Look at the, the progress on this thing. Whoa, this is what I planted this winter. And I put it in an area where water tends to pool on it. So you can see the height. Look at the height that it's taking. And so you're gonna see, see it's starting to bloom. Some of the little tiny flowers are starting to come up. These are wildflowers here in Central Texas. And this is my front yard. So if you choose, there's no place like home. Now, you see there's these little pollination bugs on top. Here's one right there. Flying around. Beautiful. I don't know if you can see that. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're tiny. Yeah, maybe they're fairies. And this is just in the front yard. Front yard. Oh. Okay, this is uh, the side yard, and like I said, this is um, about uh, after the first week and a half of March. This area here, we have prickly pears, and see these um, thick leaves here, they're actually um, more wildflowers that turn purple. And forgive me, I don't... I'm not a botanist. Yes, that is something I'm not a total expert at. I, it's not my area of expertise, but it's a purple fly that comes up later in the year. It just comes up. And then what happens is <laughs> if there's more prickly pears and I don't want them around, I just, I just weed whack them out. So there you, you've got this growth here, and you've got Marley Moo and our tribute to Bella the Movie Dog who lived here until the end of her life. So we've got more vegetation growing in our backyard. And our pool is so clean, our lake, we've had several, we pour something called pond, um, it's a pond service that people on farms use. And it keeps the water so clean that animals, birds, and squirrels will come and drink out of it. When this was a swimming pool, with chlorine in it. No birds, nobody dared to drink out of it. <laughs> we wouldn't drink out of it. It's con very, very toxic. So we've got the plant life coming. You can listen to the birds, they're back. And we've got more construction next door. All right. And um, yeah, I love it. It's, it's so great. Okay. Now, okay, I'm gonna finish up. So the money root tactic. Now, one thing that you want to um, keep in mind is military science 101. If you ever go to a military academy or anything like that, you'll learn that anytime, let's say, a country wants to expand and attack and other countries to expand their territory, it costs more. Well, so you might lose the lives of a thousand soldiers to attack other people, right? It costs more and it's a higher risk than if you were to, let's say, defend your own home. That's why we call it a home feel advantage. So back to the money root tactic. It is costly to, uh, to, to try to invade, but to defend, to you know, proactively defend your home. Uh, you lose less. So let's say if a small country was going to defend their home 
again to larger country. The larger country is going to have to expend more men, more money, more deaths, more men and women. And the small country, it may take 10,000 uh, soldiers' deaths to get that one thing, you know, what to gain that much, than maybe 10 soldiers' deaths for a smaller country to defend, right? To defend. If they're just staying within their own boundaries, taking care of their own people. So that's another thing to remember. And one other thing that I wanted to talk about was, okay, one of my late uncles, uh, during his lifetime, became a very, very uh, financially successful person. And <clears throat> when I was a kid, he, he was one of the first billionaires in the world. And no, billionaires aren't always in the public eye, okay? There's a lot of really, really wealthy people who live very, very humbly and gives a lot of money to help people, angel investors who don't want the credit, they don't want people to know. And so my late uncle, one of my late uncles, was one of these people. And I remember him telling me when I was a kid, he said, listen, wow, look at all these prickly pears. I actually like these. These are really cool looking. Some people call them weeds, but I think I love it. I just trim the sides, you know, and sometimes you don't even have a weed eater. This is what you do. Boy Scouts know that, and this is how you can mark where you left. If you're in the woods, you mark it by busting it. And so what, basically what uh, my late uncle would do is he, he, <laughs> he, he, he gave me money, and then he said, listen, I can give you this money, and he did. He gave me some cash, and for a kid, it was a lot of cash. And he said, but what I want you, if you can understand what I'm telling you right now, is then it's better than me just giving you money. And what he said to me is like, money is, is not worth anything in and of itself. It's a tool, right? Like a dog. He says, it's a dog. All right. If it's a dog and you chase after a dog, you chase after a dog, what's going to happen is the dog will run away. If you, sometimes you run away from a dog, since the dog's a predator, it'll come and chase you. I don't know, for what it's worth, something to consider, right? So, um, just from my point of view, I think that's an, what he was telling me, that it's an internal issue. It's internal tactic, meaning it, 